So when we talk today about holistic medicine, we can actually look at Tibetan medicine as perhaps one of the real forerunners of that tradition, in the sense that it was deeply dedicated to healing not only the body, not only the mind, but actually to bringing out the fullest potential of the human spirit. And we see that represented in these 79 paintings that were made during the time of the uh, the Sixth Dalai Lama and the Sisang Yamsa, but we also see it in images like we see here. We see two dancing skeletons. They're smiling, they're joyous, they're ecstatic. It's somehow deeply engaging because it's paradoxical. We're bringing together different elements into a single image that would seem to be different. Normally when we see a skull and skeletons, we think of something morbid and something depressing, but here we see something very uplifting. This is all about self-transformation, and to do that, we have to overcome all of the things that we normally associate ourselves with, and that means the physical body, that means the flesh and blood, it means the thoughts and emotions that normally define for ourselves who and what we are. Here we see skeletons. So it's this recognition that everything comes to an end. And this is something that Buddhism, of course, was based upon. Everything's impermanent, everything is uh, going to be destroyed, so there's nothing to become attached to. But what Tantric Buddhism did was actually look at the positive side of the coin, which is what this particular object in a way is representing. It's yes, the body itself will come to an end, and yet something new and creative, something joyous, something dancing emerges out of that. So it's a very complex kind of symbolism, a complex uh, kind of tantric aesthetic, if you will, in which we're seeing dissolution, we're seeing uh, disembodiment as being a cause for celebration, a cause for rejoicing. And we see that beautifully modeled uh, in this image where the, uh, the two skeletons are actually, they're kind of entwined, they're dancing together like a couple. As you see on the left hand, he's holding a treasure vase uh, in his uppermost hand. So this is a treasure vase, meaning it's the richness of the spirit. We see in the other hand, you know, these kind of magic wands and scepters. So this is the kind of mythopoetic, aesthetic, magic realism at the heart of the Tantric Buddhist tradition. Could have been on a small personal shrine, could have been in a monastery temple, but it also was more likely to have been in a household shrine. And it's not a typical image. Where we see this kind of uh, image more likely is actually in the tantric dance ceremonies called cham that were performed in monasteries. It was a way of bringing in uh, the general populace into an engagement with tantric Buddhist philosophy and narrative. And so you would see figures like this dancing as skeletons. We'll see that in one of the other rooms when we have actual film representations of Cham. But this is actually kind of a frozen moment, if you will, in the Cham dance, which is the dance of life and death. It's a dance of, perma of impermanence, but also of perpetual creativity. And that's really what tantric medicine, Tibetan medicine, is really all about. It's about recognizing that as a natural process in our body and then extending that as a kind of embodied spirituality, a kind of corporeal spirituality. And we see that, of course, in these tantric diagrams. We see that in the whole aspect of what tantra represents, but we see it in a way very graphically represented here, whereas it's not just about focusing on what's joyous and beautiful. We have to also recognize that, you know, at the bottom of it all, we're just flesh and blood, and beyond that, we're just bones, and it's all going to come to a, a kind of brilliant dissolution.